ALA is what we get from plants. That's the omega-3 that is the source of every omega-3 that the human body needs. If we get ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, we also get the other omega-3 fatty acids, the EPA and the DHA, which are longer and have higher number of double bonds, which means that they are even more unstable. That is why it's important we don't have too much of EPA and DHA in the wrong places in the body where they can go rancid. If we get EPA and DHA in the right places in the body where the body wants to manufacture them from ALA, then we are more safe because we don't suffer from the instability and rancidity that could occur with long chain omega-3 fatty acids like EPA and DHA which are, as I said, much more unstable. The body knows when to make EPA and DHA from ALA. It has all the resources to decide when it's important to convert and when it's important not to convert. A recent study in England by Dr. Welsh proved beyond shadow of a doubt that people who had ALA versus people who did not have ALA, people who ate fish versus those who did not, people who ate meat versus those who did not, that they all ended up with almost the same amount of EPA and DHA, especially DHA, in their body, regardless of what they ate, which meant that we don't have to get our DHA and EPA from fish like people would normally tell you. It's very easy for the body, especially in babies and in uh, soon-to-be mothers, in other words, women in childbearing age, and in uh, other people who are in greater need for DHA, they make much more of it. DHA is important for brain function and structure, and that is why our body makes DHA both in the liver and in the brain, where it can be protected from becoming rancid. And in the brain, DHA is extremely efficiently recycled. The half-life of DHA in the brain is two and a half years, which means we don't really lose it. It stays there. And we, did, we don't need much to replace it. No more than 3.8 milligrams per day on average, according to scientific research. Another study with the fireworkers proved again that whether people were receiving ALA or fish or marine omega-3, whether they got the plant-based or non-plant-based, in other words, they had the same resulting amount of DHA in their system. So we don't have to worry about conversion, even though the fish oil industry would like you to believe otherwise. Beyond that, we know that ALA has been scientifically proven to have numerous functions beyond its ability to convert. It can by itself give us a lot of benefits for neurological reasons, uh, purposes for cardiovascular purposes, for mood issues, and for overall anti-inflammatory effect. It has all the benefits even in the absence of EPA and DHA. But it also gives us EPA and DHA so we can have all three. Whereas if you only get fish oil, you don't get enough ALA. You get only EPA and DHA, which can be very rancid, very unstable. But more importantly, EPA by itself, even though it is important and our body manufactured it to reduce inflammation, if we get even a little too much of it, we suffer the consequences of depressed natural killer cell activity. Your immune system needs those natural killer cells to fight cancer and viral infection and other infectious organisms. And when you have too much EPA, unfortunately, you lose about 50% of your natural killer cells activity according to scientific research. That is why we want to maximize ALA, the plant-based omega-3 fatty acid that is stable, while allowing the body to manufacture the EPA when it really needs it to fight inflammation and to manufacture as much DHA as it needs for functioning of cell membranes, especially in the brain. That's the importance of ALA versus EPA and DHA.